If you plan on being a data engineer on any relatively modern stack, you're going to need to understand how to work with GitHub. But what I've come to realize is that there's really only a handful of things that you really need to know how to do, especially when you're first getting started. So what I want to do in this video is just share with you the normal cadence of things so that hopefully if you're somebody who's brand new, you can just hop right into any project and at least not feel like you're completely underwater. Now, what we want to do is get a copy of this on our local machine so that we can work with it and add our own code and be a contributing developer. So what I'm going to do is go to Visual Studio Code. And what I typically like to do in terms of structuring my GitHub repositories is I create a folder just called GitHub. And within GitHub, I put all of the projects that I'm working on or all the repositories that I'm working on. So I already have one called GitHub, but for the sake of example, I'll create a new one and we'll call this GitHub new. And let's open that. Here it is, it's an empty folder. And now what we'll do is we're going to clone this repository into this folder. So I'm going to right click, open an integrated terminal. And this is why I like VS code because you can do this and hopefully you have an editor that can do the same. So now we're working in a terminal and what we'll do is the term git clone and then let's paste in what we copied. This is that what we copied over here, press enter. And now it copied all of this over in here and we have all of the files and folders from here locally. There are some things I'm skipping here. I'm assuming you have permissions. I'm assuming this is set up and all of that's handled. It's very likely that you may have a day of just getting your permissions set. But once that's all good, these are the steps you're going to take. Now, if we look in this here right now, we're still on the GitHub new folder. We want to go down into, into the DBT training. So we'll do CD change directory DBT dash training. And we can do a git branch. And by doing that, running that command, we can see it's picking up the main branch. We don't want to put our changes directly onto the published main branch. We want to create our own first and then push it up. That's kind of how GitHub works. So to make that happen, the command is git branch. And the shortcut we can do here so that we also check it out is dash M and the name of the branch. If you have questions on some of these commands and stuff, I have other videos that can explain it more thoroughly. Now we do a git branch again. We can see we are on my first branch. So now we're operating in our own kind of development environment. So let's make a change now. Uh, let's just update the readme. So what I'll do is add something down here. Here is my change. Made the change. We can see it showed up over here. There's different ways we can go through adding it. But what you want to do is commit this change to this new branch that you've created. So we'll do a git add dot for all. So now we've added this change git commit dash M commit like it sounds is officially committing the change to the branch. You got to have a message with it. So now this is committed to the branch, but these changes still are only local here. There's nothing on GitHub. Nobody else can see this. So what we'll do to get this up there, we'll do git push origin head. So now if let's refresh this. We should see here's my first branch. Here it is. So we push this change and we can see it in here and GitHub recognizes, hey, there's a recent commit. Do you want to do what's called a pull request? And that's what we'll do. So in GitHub, this is called a pull request and GitLab is called a merge request. You might hear it called something else, but the whole idea at this point is you're taking the changes that are in your local development branch and you're trying to merge them into that main branch that everybody's working with and you go through what's called a code review process. So here we are, we have a pull request, give it a title and you would add some descriptions. At this point, you may see a template that has specific requirements for you to add. And if you scroll down, you can see the very specific changes and it will show you line by line exactly what changed. You can have it split next to each other or unified, which will put it on top of each other. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and create pull request. So now that we have the pull request open, we can see there's some activity happening here. And you may see this happening on yours as well, and you may not understand what's going on. If we were to look at the code, I'm not going to get too far into this, but we have what's called a workflow. And this workflow is going to activate anytime there's a pull request to the main branch which is what we're doing. We're trying to merge our changes into main. It recognizes that and it runs some automation. And while we're on the, the topic, I'll just point out that automation in conjunction with version control is why people use GitHub. Not only allows you to line by line monitor and code review everything. In this case, it's it's running something as soon as we merge. So we can see this did fail because of the, the code is a little outdated. Now we want our teammates to help us out. Hey, say, hey, can you review this for me? And if we go up here, 
we can go ahead and we can request reviewers. If you're on a, an enterprise account, people will show up and you could find them. In this case, it's just my other account. So I'll just click that. And it's usually a pretty good practice to say, hey, you need two approvals before you can merge. So now we've requested somebody else to review it. They'll be able to come in here and they'll see your specific commits. So every individual commit will be broken down here. Here are the checks. This is that pipeline that ran and we can see it failed. And files change. In this case, we just have one. But if you had a bunch of different files, each file would be here. And each file one by one would show the difference. So what I've done here is I've logged into my other GitHub account on a different browser so I can be in both at the same time. You can see you've been requested to review this. And now I can go ahead and add my review. And when I click this, it's going to take me to this screen. It's moving me to the files change and I can go through and look at all the changes. And this is something that you're not only going to request others do for you, but you're going to be requested to do this as well. So you're going to need to look at people's code, review it, provide feedback, and just kind of get into the flow of working as a development team. And this is a very common way of working nowadays. So you got to get used to it. I can click the plus sign on any of these, add any comment that you want. If you press this button here, it's add a suggestion, which is really cool. So you can just directly suggest what you want it to be. So maybe I say, and if we preview, you can see that it right away, kind of in a nice interface, it shows you what you're going to be commenting. You can either add it as a single comment, meaning it, you're not officially finishing your review. You're kind of going one comment at a time, or you can say you're starting the review and it will kind of package them uh, all together. Let's just say start a review. It, you can see it's pending. So that comment's not going to show up over here until we officially submit. Now up here, we can see zero of one files reviewed. Once you've reviewed it, you can check this box. You know, there's going to be scenarios where you have a lot of files. You could have 50. So it just helps you keep track. So now let's go ahead and finish the review so we can leave anything we want here. If you leave a comment, you're not explicitly saying you need changes, but you're also not approving it. It's kind of this in-between. Approval is going to give that green check mark and say you're ready to go. Request changes is saying you specifically need something changed before you can merge it. So you kind of have those three options you could pick. In this case, we'll say approve and submit review. And now we can see it shows up here for us. If we go back to our other one, the specific line by line comment that we made. And up here, we can also see the check mark that it's approved. Now, what you can do here, and this is a great part about GitHub, is you can add more conversation about a very specific change. And if you have multiple developers working, this is really helpful for just driving conversations, especially in a remote environment. You can commit this suggestion right from here. So let's say we want to commit this and it's going to add a brand new commit and close it out for us. So it resolved this and it immediately closed it out. So that's one of the other benefits of using that suggestion tab. It'll give you the ability to immediately commit it with just one click. All right, so at this point, again, it's gonna rerun again because of that new commit, but we'll just kind of disregard that. Let's say everything's good. All checks have passed. You got approvals. Let's go ahead and merge it. So we can click merge pull request. It may be grayed out until you meet all those conditions, but that's going to be dependent on your team. Get another one here to just confirm. So now it's telling us pull request successfully merged and closed, and we can delete this branch from GitHub. And we get this nice purple icon here. It says it's merged. And if we go back to the main branch, again, 21 seconds ago, it was merged. Here's the very last commit. Here's exactly what was changed. So at this point, any other developer who's working off of that main branch needs to get the latest version so that they have your change as well. But even in the scenario that they forgot, GitHub would catch that as soon as they tried to do a merge request and say, hey, you have a conflict or you're behind, you need to catch this up. So that is, again, one of the great benefits of GitHub because it kind of does all these things for you and you can follow within that process and just do your work. And at this point, everything's in main and any other products that you use, any other automation, maybe it's a scheduling tool, maybe it's a web application, everything is going to likely pull from main. That's why it's important to get it here and to have good automation and good testing on that pull request process. Let's say all the developers are pushing changes into this code base. And once a week, you want to create kind of a snapshot, a release, and grab that code and do something else with it. The way you could do that is select over here, create a new release, create this off of the main branch and give it a title. Let's say version 0.1.0, our first release. And I have a whole video on just this topic in itself. Oh, I got to create a tag. V 0.1.0, publish the release. And now what it did is it created under your releases, it gives you a tag, a name, uh, the latest commit. So you can go back and see exactly what was the latest commit into this version. And you can download the code exactly as it is. And there's a lot of reasons why you would create a release. Maybe that's, again, what you're taking to actually push to a product. Or maybe you just want to have a history 
kind of snapshots of different points in time, as opposed to just like an unlimited single version of a project. So that in a nutshell is how you can expect to work with GitHub on a development team. And hopefully now you're ready to jump on a new project and start working with GitHub. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.